All right, is there a way to measure metabolic efficiency and do glucose spikes really matter? We're gonna solve that in this video. Hey, if you would support me, support the channel, support this information, hit the like and subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we make another video drop. All right, welcome to all my subscribers or first time watchers that are here in the thirst and pursuit for knowledge and to not be manipulated by all the random fitness and medical BS that is spewed out into the market set to control you and mislead you. Here we try to bring the truth and some sanity to a world that is insane, particularly on the topic of glucose. Dun, dun, dun. This topic comes up all the time. Glucose is bad, glucose is good. You don't want spikes, all the things, right? Is glucose the gift or the curse? Well, I like us to put down the labels of glucose of whether it's good or bad. And I want to think about it as a tool and a measuring index. I find that it is very hard to measure someone's metabolic rate. Now, I know that you can do VO2 max tests. Uh, I know that there's things like the lumen and all these other things out there. But I can tell you as somebody who's been in the field a long time and almost any other coach, when you're dealing with an individual uh, tracking what their metabolic rate is or metabolic, what I like to call efficiency is how well am I utilizing the food that I am eating it can be very hard to do. And it almost has to be done with a litmus test and just watching biofeedback and weight and photos as you track someone along on their journey. However, we do have something that I know works really, really well, and it is looking at glucose. And I don't want to talk about glucose in terms of diabetics, right? Because that's where a lot of the CGM, continuous glucose monitors, you know, the one you wear on the back of the arm, the thing that they're selling you online, no glucose spikes. Oh my God, don't have a spike. This food spikes more than that food. Oh no. Giving you all that fear mongering stuff. And I'm going to tell you, unless you're a type two diabetic or someone who's in a really, really chronic condition or someone who can't lose weight or metabolism slowing down, that none of that's you then your spikes, let them be high. In fact, the bigger the spike, probably the better. Glucose spikes are not evidence that something is wrong, but there is a way to see if something is wrong and to measure your metabolic efficiency over time. Now, let me go back to go forward. Your glucose, when you started and you're like, let's say like you're 17, you're 15, you're 12, your glucose uh, averages throughout the day or two hours after you eat, uh, usually sits somewhere in the 70s. Then as you continue to get a little bit older, it gets a little bit higher. And as you get a little more older, it gets a little bit more higher. And as you get a little more older, it gets a little bit higher, right? And a lot of people would say that's age-related, and some of it certainly is. Um, more people in the scientific community believe that's more inflammation-related, like you're approaching more of a type 2 diabetic, so maybe you're you're eating more food, and maybe you're eating a little bit more food, but a lot of data actually shows some of the things we think it is, it's something else. So while inflammation is a key driver to how much glucose sits in your bloodstream as it makes it harder for it to absorb, what we've actually learned that one of the biggest drivers is the reduction in insulin. Now we've had other videos on insulin. You've heard me talk about insulin. If insulin is so much the bad guy, then why is it implemented here in age-related disease and actually in weight gain lower insulin? And that's because the body, as we age or we get diseases or inflammation rises, many people will release less insulin. Now, maybe they have a high fasting insulin. Maybe their insulin sits a little bit higher kind of all the time. But when they release insulin, when they eat food, gets less and less and less. We also see this in weight loss resistant females. They end up releasing less and less insulin right when you need it. And so then more just kind of hangs out in the body when we don't need it, storing fat. And then when we do need it, we don't get enough. So it's the synergy of insulin and glucose that are such a, an important factor, whether you're somebody who's getting older and is gaining weight, or you're someone who's maybe a younger or middle aged and can't lose weight, there's a similar synergy and insulin is one of the key drivers. And we can measure that by looking at something we call metabolic efficiency. Hey, have you ever felt like you've been getting limited or bad advice from maybe your OB or endocrinologist or one of your doctors and don't know why you feel bad and are looking for better options, particularly in the world of hormonal health? Well, I've launched our own medical endocrinology organization called Vital Med. Vital Med has the fundamental belief that we need to listen to you first and provide you with an arsenal of options 
to make sure that we get the best outcomes for you, but we have your interest in mind. No more just going to the doctor being shoved pills or the wrong kind of hormones or being put on the wrong protocols and then not getting the result that you want. Vital Med has a team of doctors, nurse practitioners, and nurses who really listen and have the up-to-date knowledge to give you the best options for your care with great results. Check us out, vitalmed.com. So also look at this chart, as you can see here, it kind of just shows over time that insulin is a direct result, right? The amount that we release of age and health. So the younger that we are, the healthier that we are, the more insulin we release when we eat food, okay? So I could eat 100 grams of carbs and my sugars could go jump really high. They can go to 150, 170, 190. It doesn't matter almost at all. Stop looking at the spike and start paying attention to your metabolic average. Harvard studies show and many studies have shown that the average person who's really metabolically healthy will take those 170 sugars that spike and then absorb all of that with the right amount of insulin to go into the cells and nourish the body and go back to baseline within two hours. So the real metabolic efficiency test is not like a fasted glucose or a fasted insulin. It is really a two hour postprandial, which means checking your glucose, two hours after you eat food, meaning chew your food, the last swallow, set a timer on your phone, 60 minutes, and then, oh, excuse me, 120 minutes. At 60 minutes, you're, you're, you're peaking at two hours. You should be back to normal. And then you can look at that a couple times throughout the day. Or with a CGM, you can see your collective average. But once again, CGMs are looking at an interstitial fluid. That's not direct blood. And for people with normal functioning bodies, I think it's, you have to be careful to see the accuracy of your average glucose. Um, using one of those, in fact, it, it overvalues a little bit. Some of the newer technologies for CGM still could be used. I like CGMs, just be aware. There's no studies on healthy people measuring interstitial fluid uh, as it relates to blood glucose. So because of that, I, I kind of, I wait away from that and I start to look at finger pricking and measuring it over time. And so um, what we see is, is that this as age goes up, sugar level begins to go up. Now, more and more sugar in the blood leads to a sugar burning state, right? More and more sugar less, leads to less insulin sensitization. So when insulin fires, it doesn't fire, fire as strong when you eat, and then you're not releasing enough leptin to burn fat. So you can look at glucose as it starts to creep up as an indicator of metabolic efficiency, like how efficient am I being with my food? You should be able to consume any amount of food and then within two, two and a half hours, for the most part, you should go back to baseline, which should be in the 80s, some people high 70s if you wanna be really metabolically efficient. That means your body took all the nutrients, absorbed it, got it in the cells, brought things back down to, to baseline and everything is all good. That's what we want to see. Right, but both in people that are way overweight or people that can't lose weight that may not be that high of weight, we see this similar issue where glucose continues to slowly creep up. This is a sign of metabolic inefficiency. Now, modern medical science will tell you this has nothing to do with it, and you don't have to worry till your sugars get to 120 and that would make you diabetic. No, there is a big gap between being optimal and using all your food correctly and then making energy and then this creep up effect until all of a sudden you're diabetic. They're not right next to each other. You don't go from maximally optimal to diabetic overnight like that. There is this huge progression that happens and we can measure it. It's called your two hour postprandial. It's in your sugars. People will fight me on this all the time, but it is absolutely the truth. Stop staring at spikes, start looking at two hour postprandials and looking at your average glucose throughout the day because that is going to give you your average metabolic efficiency. Watching that number over time will let you know if your body's getting too stressed and inefficient or if you're overfeeding it or if you're underfeeding it too long. And now if you use that as your goalpost, the different things you do to your body, you'll be able to watch the side effect of that by your glucose level and that can help programming and help get massive outcomes where other people may have found confusion because they couldn't figure out what was working and what wasn't because they had no marker to track. If you're someone who's interested in this, I teach this method at our university to doctors and coaches all over the world. It works amazing. We use this at our coaching offices to help any condition, weight loss resistance, and just to optimize athletes. So 
This we know works. We've done it with over 55,000 people. And then the literature also supports some of what we're saying. So when you got both in alignment, usually you're on the right track. So stop looking at spikes, start paying attention to two hour post perennials and look at your average glucose level as your average metabolic efficiency and prevent it from trickling up over time. And you are going to have a healthy, optimal, long life. Hey, you completed the education. Thank you for driving your knowledge and hopefully making you 1% better. And if you want another 1%, why don't you check out any one of these videos here? Thanks for watching.